is going on YouTube? So I wanted to continue my NFL draft series with this is part four of my rankings. So today I'm just going to do tight ends. I thought about doing a tight end and offensive line combination, but today I was just going to do all, just going to do tight ends. So instead of doing the format of top ten and then five outside, I'm just going to do top eight with no five outside, just because this is a really really thin tight end class. So go ahead and start with my first one. I got the. Six foot six, two hundred fifty-five pound tight end out of Arkansas. That is Hunter Henry. So I have him projected as a second, third round pick. He might go early second. I don't see it. I don't see him really sliding into the first round until, or unless there's a team that really, really, really needs a tight end. Like I said, this is a thin tight end class, and I think he's pretty much the clear cut number one. Since OJ Howard and Jordan Leggett did not declare for the draft. Since they did not both declare, then I think that is going to dramatically hurt the depth and just the overall availability of the tight ends in this draft. So, nonetheless, Hunter Henry is a very solid tight end. Like I said, I see him probably going in this mid-late second round, if I'm being honest. He's a good blocker. He's a good receiver. He could be a reliable tight end, maybe not a top five guy in the league, but, you know, a top maybe a top. 10 top 15 tight end for 5 10 years in the league. So, move on to my second tight end and I have the I believe 6'4, 249 pound tight end out of Stanford and that is Austin Hooper. So, Hooper to me projects as a third fourth round pick. I think that he is I think he's the clear cut second best tight end in the draft again. After my top 3 it starts getting a little bit fuzzy, but yeah, I think he is my clear-cut second tight end again since O.J. Howard and Jordan Leggett did not declare for the draft. He was a pretty good receiving threat at Stanford. His blocking isn't great, but if I could obviously give him a comparison, I'd give him the Kobe Fleener comparison. They seem pretty similar. Neither are great, great blockers, but he's pretty athletic. He's a good receiver. Like I said, he'll be a good receiving tight end in the NFL, I think, for a couple years. So move on to my number three tight end. And I've got the 6'6", 260-pound Ohio State kid, and that is Nick Vanette. So, Vanette isn't a great receiving tight end, but he is a very good blocking tight end. I think that Nick Vanette is one of the best tight ends in the draft. Again, not a great receiving tight end, but he will be a guy that can seal the edge for you and maybe could turn into a receiving tight end eventually. Not a very fast guy, runs about a 4'9", 40, but he is big, so if nothing else, you could at least throw it up, maybe get him a couple balls, but anyway, like I said, after this, it starts getting really thin. For me, he projects as a 4th to 5th round pick, again, unless there's a lot of tight end needs to start appearing kind of later in the draft. So, my fourth guy is a guy that's probably relatively unknown, but he's a 6'6", 258-pound East Carolina kid, and that's Bryce Williams. So Bryce Williams, again, a kid from non-Power 5 school. I think that he is a guy that could use a strong senior bowl pro day in combine, but he's a very solid receiving tight end. He can block decently as well. Not the mo I mean, he is pretty athletic, especially for a non-Power 5 tight end, but he's a guy that largely is going to have to get looks from, like I said, places like the senior bowl. And I haven't projected as a 4th to 5th round pick. I think his stock is very shaky right now. It could go up or it could go way down, depending on how well he does in the upcoming months before the draft. So move on to my number 5 tight end. And I have, I believe, the 6'5", excuse me, 6'6", 230, or 231 pounder out of South Carolina, and that's Jarrell Adams. So Jarrell Adams is a guy who is a pretty good receiving tight end. He could, again, a lot like Bryce Williams, benefit from having a good senior bowl. And he's a pretty athletic guy. He's one of the more athletic tight ends in the draft. Not extremely fast. Runs about a 4 7 40. So, again, this is where it starts getting real thin. I have him projected as a 5th to 6th round pick. I think he could, again, with a good senior bowl, could go as high as the 4th round maybe. So move on to my number six tight end, and I've got the 6'6", 252 pounder out of Florida, and that is Jake McGee. So Jake McGee is a guy that's going in with relatively unknown, just 
overall attributes. He hasn't played a whole lot since his time at Florida. He transferred over from Virginia, is a pretty fast guy, one of the faster tight ends in the draft, runs about a 4.6 or 4.7 40. I haven't projected as a fifth to sixth round pick. I think he's a guy that could use a, just one good outing. I think he's a guy that if he has one good outing at the Senior Bowl Combine, anything like that, it will tremendously boost his draft stock. But also, like I said, it's very shaky, so anything like that could also hurt him just as much as it could help. All right, so move on to my number seven tight end, and I have the 6'6", 250-pounder out of Western Kentucky, Tyler Higby. Now, Tyler Higby's a guy that has good hands. He's a decent receiving threat, but he's also very slow. He'll be a productive tight end in the NFL, I believe. I haven't projected as a fifth to sixth round pick. You pretty much know what you're getting here. He had a good quarterback throwing to him in college with Brown, or Brandon Dowdy and got a little bit of exposure. I think he's a guy that has a relatively stable, about as stable as anyone in this tight end class of draft stock as you will find. So, move on to my last tight end and the one I'm probably going to end up talking most about besides Hunter Henry. And I believe he is the 6'3". 6'5", excuse me, 6'5", 264 pounder out of Arkansas State, and that's Darian Griswold. And this is for one reason for me. He is probably one of the most intriguing prospects in this tight end class, if not the most intriguing. So he's one of the most athletic, that's for sure. He didn't get too much exposure, obviously, playing at Arkansas State with a dual threat quarterback in Freddie Knighton that didn't really look his way too much. He played for a decent team, yeah, but again, a non-Power 5 team. And he runs about a 4640. A guy that's pretty big, has good hands. I haven't projected as a sixth to seventh round pick just because I don't think he's gonna get that many looks. But when you look at the names around him, some of the guys that I noticed that are around him, just not very good tight ends, J. Rome, Billy Freeman, Kyle Carter, the guys out of Georgia, Penn State, San Jose State. I don't think they really match up to him. Again, this is a very thin tight end class, so these type of players are something you're going to have to go digging for, and I think he's a very intriguing prospect, one that will be, I think, a pretty good tight end for years to come if he ever gets the chance with any decent team. Like I said, he's a pretty athletic guy in a thin tight end class, so I don't know if he's going to the Senior Bowl. I haven't read anything on that, and probably will participate in the Combine, and I think a guy that could really shine through one of those. Again, if I had to pick one sleeper out of this class, I would pick him. That's why he's in my top eight. I'm not going to be giving a five outside for this one. Like I said, it's a very thin class. A lot of these guys, the bottom three might not even be drafted. I don't know. Like I said, it depends on the variety of the needs of teams in the draft just for a tight end. Although this was a pretty good year for tight ends, the NFL, so I don't know what, or I don't, I couldn't see really tight end being a huge need this year. So that pretty much concludes my tight end rankings. Tomorrow I will be coming back with my offensive lineman rankings, which concludes the offensive portion of my rankings. And then after that I will be moving into the defensive portion of my rankings, obviously. So that's pretty much it. If you haven't checked out the rest of my videos, two of them will be in the outro. And then just go check out the playlist. I will put the playlist the link in the description below that has all of my rankings so far. And then also my NFL mock draft. If you haven't checked that out, go check that out as well. So that's pretty much it. See ya. So, coming back with my part three of the NFL draft big board. So, today I'm doing my wide receiver rankings and sits. Wide receiver is generally a deeper, has a deeper amount of picks than quarterback or running back. I'm going to do uh, top 12 instead of top 10. Not a big difference, but anyway, moving.